Hello everyone, my name is Kastein and I welcome you to another design tutorial. Today I will be talking to you about multiplayer level design fundamentals. Getting into level design is a pinnacle for many game designers. It's an environment where you can let your artistic mind loose and create content that players will experience firsthand. You can decide what feelings your level will resonate how to enhance the overall theme of the game and how to utilize the game mechanics to create a fun experience. Multiplayer levels, often referred to by players as maps, have some unique distinctions from single player levels and some important things to take into consideration. A single player level is for one player at a time and the balancing required is between the player and the game. Here we can more easily predict outcomes and guide player actions. That said, without properly testing your game, you will be surprised at how players will play your game. It might not be the way you foresaw it. In a single player level, you will probably have artificial intelligence that interacts with the player somehow, either as allies, enemies, or people minding their own business to create a realistic feel. In multiplayer maps, there is rarely AI, except when you play multiplayer maps alone and act by bots to play with. AI might also occur as a general at a spawn point yelling to you at to get moving or someone dealing out supplies commonly referred to as uh, NPCs but it's not the same level of interaction between AI and players as with the single player level and this is because in a multiplayer level the players are content players are the one you are supposed to interact with and by cutting down the AI to a minimum you will create an environment where players are encouraged to interact through play Interaction isn't just about communication, it's also about playing together, either in cooperation or confrontation. If you want a multiplayer level with two opposing teams, it's important to create a level that encourages teamwork, because if it doesn't encourage teamwork, why would they be in a team in the first place? Thinking logical is a smart thing to do in everyday life, and it's a smart thing to do in level design as well. When you start to design a multiplayer level, there are a couple of things you should take into consideration. What kind of interaction between players do I want this level to accomplish? Should they all kill each other without much thought? Should they work in the team to be able to survive? Should they organize to split up in different roles with different responsibilities? Why would a player care? How is the player connected to this interaction? Is it explained through the game? Will the player feel there is a point in working together with others to achieve a goal? What is the goal, and why would they want to achieve it? Does this kind of interaction make sense within the game? With the game mechanics your game utilizes, the theme of the game, and with the setting of your level, does the kind of player interaction and behavior you want to encourage make sense? If you play the role as a diplomat, representing a group of players, and are on board a hostile spaceship owned by a group of other players, in a level designed for a deathmatch, where everybody is against everybody, would that make sense? How can I encourage this interaction and behavior with the level design? Now this is the million dollar question. For the rest of this tutorial we will look at some multiplayer level design basics and look at how they affect play and player interaction. When setting out to create a multiplayer level there are some basic questions you need to consider. How many players will the level be designed for? 4 players, 8 players, 12 players, 16 players. What will the primary game type be? As I mentioned, diplomatic negotiation with a level design for the deathmatch game type might not be the best idea. Focus on a game type that fits what you want to accomplish with the level and make it tight. How big will the map be? Take the number of players and game type into consideration. Also, think about how adding vehicles will affect the scale of the level and if they make sense. A small level with a lot of corridors and tunnels is not that fun for a tank, but a grand open field is. To make a map work well with both players on foot and in vehicles can be challenging and has a great influence on the balance of your game, so don't rush it. Don't add tanks at the end of your level design process just because they are cool. Once you know your number of players, the game type, and the scale you are aiming for, your initial direction is set up. 
From here, there are principles that are essential for multiplayer design that you should work your way through. The first of the principles is simplicity. Design in such a way that players can gain a quick understanding of the basics of the level. Very soon, they want to be thinking about other things like defending themselves or the best strategy to win, and they certainly don't want to spend time studying the map with the enemy a few feet away. They want to play. To accomplish simplicity, use a map core with simple elements, for example a square in the middle with connected structures. The simpler the map, the easier it is for the player to comprehend. Less is more. The next principle is orientation. When players die and respawn, they need to be able to quickly orient themselves about where they are on the map, adding in unique visual details or unique non-interactive objects in the environment of the level can help the players distinguish where they are quickly as it has a certain level of familiarity as opposed to if all the walls and floors are the same texture. Using these unique assets add to the variety of the level and makes it more interesting. Be careful about overusing this technique as the level can quickly turn into level design Las Vegas with too much flashing lights and visual noise. Again less is more. This is the map defiance from Unreal Tournament 3 and it has recognizable signs that stand out. Not uh, no other place in the level has the same signs. And uh, another unique sign in the same map. And this is the dust from Counter-Strike with unique graffiti on the wall.